Hello guys, welcome to Houdini Made Simple. In this tutorial, I'm going to explain in depth how the microsolvers gas disturbers work inside Pyro, the main settings, and how to set it up properly in order to create fine detail inside your simulation. So here we have a really basic setup uh, in Pyro. It's just a sphere emitting some density and temperature. So the, as you can see, the smoke is going up, but it's creating this mushroom shape. Uh, so if we want to start creating some detail, we want to use a gas disturbance, gas disturb in this case, a microsolver, and connect this into the second entry. And right off the bat, we can see if we hit play again, that it's already creating some detail inside the smoke. We can see there's already some breakup on the edges. Uh, and in this case, it's working by default, but this is not going to be the case in every scene. So we're going to go through the main settings to understand what is uh, happening and how to create fine detail. So the gas disturb basically is applying noise to the velocity field in the environment. This is going to help to preserve the general motion and shape of your simulation, but also create small scale detail. So let's visualize what's going on under the hood so we can activate the visualize disturbance. And as you can see, we have some red and blue. And the red area uh, is going to be basically when we are applying uh, disturbance at full, full intensity. And the blue is where we are not applying at all. So uh, as you can see, let's turn off the density so we can see what's happening. And you can see that. Uh, in around the smoke we have a uh, full intensity and uh, inside the smoke we don't have any disturbance applied and we can switch this to force and this is going to show you the noise pattern we have around the smoke uh, and again it's going to be full intensity around the smoke a bit of intensity on the edges and nothing on the inside it's going to be by default we can change that eventually but typically this is going to be uh, the way we want this to work so we don't change too much the overall shape and motion of the simulation. On the main settings tab, we have strength. That's going to be the intensity of the noise. Then we have the threshold range. We're going to talk about that later. And we have two modes, a continuous and block pace. So continuous mode is going to create a noise pattern at the smallest uh, scale possible. Uh, this will add details at a small scale and always depending on the voxel size of your sim. So if you change uh, the voxel size of your sim, the size of this pattern is gonna change too. If we compare this to block base, we can set up a fixed size uh, of the noise pattern we want to work with. So if we change, let's say to 0.5, we're gonna make these boxes uh, bigger where we're gonna have like this noise pattern. Uh, we can actually go to the guide range and make this uh, go to 20. So we can actually see those boxes where we have different noise patterns. And we can go again and change this to one to make that box bigger. And you can clearly see how we have boxes of uh, one by one, where inside those boxes we have different noise patterns that's going to be affecting the simulation. And always be aware that the right block base for your uh, simulation is going to really depend on the scale of your scene. So if you have like a really big explosion, this uh, block size might be like uh, pretty high. If you have you are working in something like small scale, you're going to have to probably go pretty low. Uh, the idea is to create fine details. So uh, you're going to have to find the right block size for your own simulation. So strength is pretty straightforward. If you go pretty high, you're going to have a high intensity noise uh, in your disturbance. And if you go pretty low, it's going to be pretty subtle. So you're, you're going to have to find the right value to your simulation. So going back to continuous mode, as you can see now, it's not based on a block size. It's just going to try to create a noise pattern uh, at the smallest scale possible. And it's only going to change if we change the voxel size. So in this case, if we change the voxel size of the simulation, as you can see now, the noise pattern is pretty small. So again, it's always trying to create a detail and noise at the smallest uh, scale possible, depending on the voxel size of your simulation. In this mode, strengths and reference scale, they're going to act as multipliers. So basically, reference scale, if you go lower, it's not going to change the size of the pattern. It's just going to 
a change the intensity of the noise. So if you go super low, you can see that now it's pretty subtle, the noise. And if you go high again, it's going to be red again. So basically, it's a multiplier of the strength. So it is my preference to usually use the block base mode. So in this case, I'm going to go back to that so I can actually control the size of the noise pattern and then we can control the intensity using the, the strength. So I'm going to go back now and turn on density again so we can display and see the smoke. And as you can see now, the noise is uh, acting on the outside and that's going to depend on the threshold range. So let's go and visualize the strengths. As you can see now, we have a red on the outside. We have some strengths on the edges of the smoke and then we have nothing in the middle and that's going to depend on the threshold range. So if we turn that off and we hit play, now you can see that the intensity is being applied equally in, in the whole uh, environment, in the whole simulation. So typically we want that threshold range on uh, because that's going to allow us to apply uh, mostly on the outside and on the edges and that's going to help us to uh, kind of keep the overall shape and behavior of the simulation uh, and only creating some uh, break amp and noise on the edge of the, of the effect. So basically this threshold range is multiplying the strength based on the density. So uh, let's say we have a density, right? And uh, we might have a value from 0 0.05 to 0 on the other end. And this is going to be uh, mapping and multiplying from 0 to 1. So when you have 0 density, it's going to be multiplying the strengths by 1. And where you have 0 0.05 or less, it's going to be the strengths that we are multiplying. And if we have 0 0.05 or less, it's going to be 0. And in the middle, it's going to be mapping. So if we have some uh, value in the middle, let's say 0 0.025, uh, this is going to be multiplied by 0 0.5, the strength value. So the red we see on the viewport basically is this end range where we have 0 density, the 0 0.05 and in the middle is going to be the, the edge where you have some, uh, some strength. And then when you have more density than this value, it's going to be multiplied by zero, that this is going to be the, the, the zone in the center or the, the blue stuff. That's why it's important to be careful when we play with this range, because if we put a higher value on the right and the left, this is going to flip the, uh, the noise, meaning that now you're going to start applying noise inside the smoke which might be something you want depending on your on your what you're looking for but uh, this is gonna probably change uh, way more the overall shape uh, and again usually we're gonna use the gas disturbance to create uh, some noise and break up on the on the edges you can play if you want with the first value maybe a bit higher to start going inside and start affecting uh, a bit more than the edges but it's up to you just feel free to play with this but Always uh, make sure to monitor the, the, the end result so you don't get any, any weird noise. So now that the main settings and concepts are clear, we can start playing with the strengths to uh, create more intensity and more uh, breakup on the, on the sim. Again, we can also keep playing with the block size until we find something we like. Uh, be careful with the block size, uh, don't go too low if you don't have enough uh, voxels. Uh, and again, I'm going to turn off the visualization because this is going to make everything slower. This was just to, to explain some concepts and for you to uh, know that you have that option to monitor your, your noise pattern. But now we can start playing with the strengths and the block size until we get something we, we like. So after playing for a little, this is uh, my my result, I went a bit lower with the voxel size so I can create more uh, detail. Uh, but again, you don't always have to go super low with the voxel size. Super important to uh, set up properly the disturbance, the turbulence. Again, now we're working with a simple emitter when we have no initial velocities. 
uh, but uh, you can see how much detail you can create only with one disturbance imagine what you can do uh, when you have like an interest uh, emitter plus you have a, a few layers of disturbance and turbulence uh, so it is super important to understand that uh, it's not only about uh, going always lower with the voxel size it's also important to uh, know how to shape and create details using uh, microsolders. So I went ahead and I cached uh, 72 frames. It was pretty fast, still uh, in a pretty low res, but as you can see, only with one gas disturbance, I'm able to create a lot of detail, nice detail that if we go to, to Karma, we can see right away that it's looking pretty nice. Uh, so again, it's super important to, of course, have a good amount of voxels when you are working in, in Pyro and, and, and have a, like a high res scene, but it's not going to help if you don't set up properly the, the microsolvers to really shape up and create a good detail in, in Pyro. Uh, so guys, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Uh, thank you for watching. Please don't forget to comment, like and subscribe and I will see you on the next one.